But anyway, back to Covington and Usman. Their first fight and, and how I think this fight's... Well, actually, let's talk about this. Because I thought um, this was sort of like the start of Usman coming into his own from both Southpaw and Orthodox with the jab. Really nice stuff. Um, but I thought that Colby Covington, his game plan was awful. And, you know, fair enough. You, you're like, oh, we're going to have a grudge match. I'm going to go in there and bang. But his coaches were also awful between rounds, which, which is very weird because they're, you know, it's American top team. Um, Conan Silvera was his main cornerman. Uh, and they're saying things like, uh, right, you need to go hard. Five more minutes and, and stuff like that. And it, like no content behind it, which is weird because, you know, if you watch Mike Brown or Dean Thomas in the corner, they typically have specific advice, even if it's things like we need combinations, Tyron, which you've never thrown in your life. Um, but it's especially weird because every time uh, Usman switched to Southpaw, he was opening up the calf kick. And the calf kick is a great kick because one, uh, it, it cripples people very quickly. And two, it, it comes in below the knee. So it's a lot harder to run in on a takedown off it. Uh, so you, you can throw it against good wrestlers and not have the same outcome as if you throw like a thigh kick or a body kick, which, you know, Co uh, Covington was throwing throughout this fight. And Usman himself is a guy who is publicly known to have shit knees. His knees are falling apart and uh, to never attack his leg. Like Co Covington threw one low kick in the entire fight by my count. Uh, and that was when he was when Usman went back to orthodox. Um, it was an inside shin kick. And you're like, that doesn't do anything. What was the point of that? But Usman's a guy like um, Dominic Cruz, where if you look at it with any sort of um, measure of sense, you know, just, just approach it as a logical problem, the guy needs his legs to move around on and his knees aren't in great shape. You should probably work, be working towards kicking in your game plan, uh, low kicking. And uh, no, still no, everyone got transfixed by uh, Dominic Cruz's head. Prior to Henry Cejudo, no one was using low kicks well against Dominic Cruz. But yeah, uh, Covington threw no low kicks the entire fight. Basically, he was doing fine from orthodox in the early going, and that's probably because he sees a lot of orthodox fighters. You know, that's who he's going to be training against most of the time. And then um, Usman started switching between the two, did a lot of good work from Southpaw, and then he went back towards orthodox near the end after he'd already broken um, uh, Covington's jaw and had really beaten him up with the jab and body shots too. Um, but really, every time he switched, Covington should have been like, feigning punches at the head or just throwing like punches that didn't he didn't really need to land at the head and then slamming in the calf kick and the, the other thing is that like specifically against jabbers because they like to adopt a long stance to to shoot in with the jab if you watch uh usman fight generally his stance is very long anyway with like very low degree of bend in the legs which is another thing about his uh knee issues like he stunned um I've been commenting actually, but he's done some guy and there's a great gif of him like trying to chase across the ring and he can't because his knees are locked up <laughs> and he looks like a big scary spider. It's really weird. But yeah, you need to extend into your stance the jab like Husman does and that is, uh, you know, the perfect time to counter with the with the calf kick. You know, the, maybe the inside slip and calf kick, maybe if the distance is right, you just slide back and calf kick. But um, the counter calf kick is the jab killer. But there was one kick below the waist attempted in that entire fight by uh, Colby Covington. So, yeah, not not great game planning, not great cornering. Um, obviously, the wrestling didn't really come into it at all, aside from the end where um, Covington tried to stick his head between Usman's legs to do the... Uh, is that an Iranian where you lift them? But I don't think his intention was to lift him. I think he was just trying to stick his head between... Usman's legs so that Usman couldn't hit him. And if you watch the finish, like, Usman's not landing good blows to finish the fight. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, whatever on the stoppage, but, like, it wasn't. I, I thought uh, Covington was doing a decent job of trying to hide his head and, and stay away from further punishment, um, probably re recapture some of his senses. But aside from that, the wrestling barely factored. For Usman, the stuff that worked was obviously the jab off both stances. Um, double, I would say... Probably more so off uh, Southpaw in the early going uh, until he, you know, uh, Covington got more hittable as the fight progressed. But uh, the South Southpaw jab was a good shout because obviously Covington's going to have to deal with less Southpaws. And a lot of Southpaws don't have a good jab because they get into that Covington role of uh, lead hand fighting and then throwing combinations or, or kicks or whatever. Um, the front kick to the body was a great shout by Usman. Uh, if you watched, like, Covington himself loves uh, a body kick and a head kick, but the, the way that Covington uses the head kick is like a, a round kick, obviously, to the head, 
uh, off his left leg, and then he level changes immediately afterwards. So if you watch like the Lawler fight or the Woodley fight, I mean, both guys were basically dead on their feet, but um, the RDA fight, you know, anytime he goes up and down and then changes levels and takes someone down, uh, there's often a high kick in there. It's a great way to stand a guy up because he's going to be braced taking the kick. You're going to be lifting him up into his stance and then you drop on his hips. Um, but the body kick, you know, the round kick to the body is another one that Usman th- sorry, uh, Covington throws uh, to pair up with that high kick. And it very rarely lands on the body. And if you watch, um, well, any of Usman's fights, but like the Usman fight against... Um, Burns and the Edmund fight against uh, Masvidal. He does a very good job of if you throw a body kick at him, he takes it on the forearms and then the other hand comes across and start, scoops behind the kick and starts parrying it across his body to start coming in with either like a takedown attempt or to follow up with uh, striking of his own. Same parry that um, Masvidal used on Cerrone, of course. But more than that, like taking a kick on the arm, not ideal if you're fighting like Yodson and Clyde, they will just kick you in the arm until your arm breaks or just to like lift you out of stance and uh, score points basically on the pretty kick and how you reacted. You know, a lot of people, if you kick them in the forearm or wrist really well, they have to, they sort of stumble. Um, but in MMA, you know, if you throw a round kick and it just it, to the body, you know, and the guy's arms aren't out of position, you're just going to hit his arm. And then, you know, more likely than not, he's going to chase you back with something, um, whether that be a takedown attempt or a, a punch or whatever. Whereas Usman was having great success with front kicks to the body of his rear leg, which, you know, front kicks to the body are are killing it in MMA right now. Whether it's a snap kick or a push kick, doesn't really matter. It's the same line. It comes straight up the center. It's the jab of the legs. Uh, what was it? Duke Rivers, he used to call it a leg jab. Um, the leg jab. Doesn't take a lot of talent to kick someone in the leg. Uh, but uh, the... You know, it's it's the longest, straightest blow of the lower body, except for low-line sidekicks. And it conveniently targets a, a body part that's quite hard to target with your hands. Dipping down for a body jab, you know, you do sort of expose yourself a little bit to counters. So um, front kicks to the body, great shout. You know, the, the problem is you're on one leg, but you're keeping the guy out at such a distance. You know, you, on a round kick to the body versus a, uh, fr- a front kick to the body. Round kick to the body, your knee comes up. And the guy can step inside your knee, which is how 90% of uh, people who get counted on uh, round kicks get counted. On a front kick to the body, your knee's in the way and your foot's in the way. Um, And and it's kind of like how on the calf kick in McGregor Poirier uh, 2, Poirier's throwing the calf kick. If you throw a a thigh kick, it'll ride up. If you throw a calf kick, the guy has to reach down and pull it up. And the distance was greater, so Poirier's foot was always in, be- like his foot and knee always ended up in between him and McGregor, which is stuff you can fight off. If the guy steps down inside your knee, you've got issues. Um, so the front kick, much better generally. I think everyone should be using the front kick, abusing it. Um, and uh, Usman did in that fight really well. Uh, the interesting thing was like the, the front kick probably got more weight behind it because it's, uh, you know, you're, if you're throwing your weight onto it, you're on one leg, you're throwing your whole weight through your foot it's a leg so it's heavier but the way that body shots tend to work is that it's, a, it's an attritive effect and the ones that like double people over tend to be the ones where they've been caught breathing in or they just didn't expect it so um, a lot of Usman's best hurting blows to the body in that fight were right uppercuts to the body from orthodox which he kept catching because uh, when Covington came in he'd try and grab the collar tie behind the head and then hit him with the uppercut to the body winded him really bad in like round one and round four I think it was but on the subject of the uh, the collar tie, he grabbed the double collar tie in round one, and I really liked Covington's defense, which, you know, defending the double collar tie or the tie plum, as we used to call it back in the day, before we knew that plum was just the word for clinch generally in tie. Um, the, the break to the double collar tie typically are, you know, you put your hand across them, you cross face them, and you turn your shoulders. Um, if you watch, like, uh, Nick Diaz against... Paul Daly and lots of people like he'd let them grab the double collar tie put an arm across their uh, throat like turn his shoulders to strip the collar tie and then come back hitting the body um there's other ones where like Fedor used to like doing the same sort of thing he but he'd grab behind their head and then use his shoulder but generally it's like stretching out the arms and turning the shoulders to pop them off uh but Covington when he was double collar tied by Usman in the first round he reaches directly up like he's combing his hair, you know, elbow going upwards alongside his head. And he, he he gets his fingers over the top of Usman's fingers. So if you imagine doing like a finger-to-finger grip, 
or a skeleton grip or S grip. Go look that up on Google Images. But if you imagine doing that, but with the other guy's hand, <laughs> so he just peels all four fingers at the same time. And if you're holding four fingers at the same time, that's legal in most grappling sports. Um, it's only when you start peeling one finger away from the others or two you know, or even three. But, you know, if you, get, if you get all the fingers, it's legal. So I was really enjoying that, like him just pe- reaching up and peeling it down. Uh, and it was very similar to what Rick Glenn was doing on the bottom of side control the other day, clearing the crossface by peeling the, the hand at the fingers. But most of that fight was just voluminous punching by both men. I mean, the jab was getting off from uh, Usman. But then if Covington hung around and threw more punches afterwards, he could often catch Usman on the return. Uh, it was, you know, Usman was doing the better sharp shooting and um, hitting one at a time and Co- Covington was doing better in combinations, but it wasn't like he was landing all the combinations. He was landing like the third punch on the end of a combination. So he ended up probably landing less overall. And it was it was like neither wanted to test the other's wrestling. You know, it was uh, it was basically the good outcome to the classic grappler versus grappler dilemma in MMA where you normally just end up with like a shit kickboxing match. Czech Congo fought another kickboxer back when he was starting out in MMA. Um, I think it was Ivel because they were both massive black dudes, but they just rolled around on the floor trying to heel hook each other. Like They didn't do anything to do with the kickboxing part. But yeah, we're doing this fight again. I'd say Colby Covington kicked the fucking legs. I mean, it's going to be tougher when it's Southpaw versus Orthodox because you don't want to be kicking inside the leg. It's not as useful. And step up calf kicks are quite tricky. You know, watch like Arnold Allen. Um, step up low kick like uh Jerome Labana style go high on the leg but you then you're wrestling risking the wrestling um but every time he turns southpaw you should be punting his fucking leg every time he's jabbing from southpaw you should be punting his fucking leg you know making him um you know you, you there's two things that can happen you injure him as he keeps going for it and then you've got a a less mobile target a guy who's going to have less uh or more trouble stopping your takedown attempts if you want to go to them or he's going to stop throwing jabs from southpaw which takes away 50% of your problem um, and then back to orthodox, you know, yeah, he just he was doing all right from orthodox last time. His right hook was catching um, Usman a lot, but he was still struggling with the jab an awful lot. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be very interested to see if they've got anything to, to take that away. I liked his left straight to the body from um, Southpaw versus orthodox. Uh, body work more generally, you know, effective body work, because that's the difference. Like the, the difference is summed up by that, by his body kick versus Usman's. Usman's was poking in regularly. Maybe not as powerful, but poking in. And uh, Covington's was slamming into the forearm every time. Uh, and then he'd throw like a knee or something, stepping out afterwards. Like the the pace is not an issue. Colby Covington can go. You know, he was getting hit in the body and still went for uh, four and a bit rounds, throwing high kicks the entire time. It's a case of picking better shots, not throwing four or five strikes at air to, to land, a, a you know, a sixth. Whereas Isman, you know, accuracy has been his stock and trade recently. Uh, so more of that. I'll be very interested to see if, if they do go to the wrestling and try and test it. You've got to think Covington has an advantage on the level change. Um, but if he gets him to the fence, you know, Usman's very, very strong. And you don't want to get turned around and just held to the fence and hit with short right hands to the body. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those ones where, like, the first fight was clearly a grudge fight. This one's supposed to be a, a grudge match. They're billing it as a grudge match. But you have to go away and be like, yeah, no, we did well in the first fight, both of us. But... Usman clearly fought smarter. Usman didn't come for like a, we're going to throw haymakers. At you. Well, I mean, he was throwing good punches, but he wasn't there to just like take his head off with every blow. He was jabbing. He was kicking the body. He was trying to pull him onto body shots as he came forward. Uh, and um, Covington was just there going like, I'm going to land more punches to the head every time we come together. But clearly the two best guys in the world. So i um, quite excited for that. And <laughs> we've, we might get to see Ali Abdulaziz being a dickhead again. I was watching the... Uh, the last fight, and the moment that they go and still and raise um, Usman's hand, Ali Abdelaziz marches in from behind everyone else in a, a suit over an orange turtleneck and banging his chest, walking right up to Usman, like deliberately in the camera shot immediately behind Usman. <laughs> and uh, then there's a great clip. Go go find Hectic One on uh, Twitter. If you're big in the MMA meme space, he's your guy. But uh, there is a, ca- a shot, you know, when they do, do those like pose for photos afterwards, like with your team or whatever, or your family. There's an amazing shot of Ali Abdelaziz standing in front of Usman and his entire team and family 
uh, and directly in front of his mother, just blocking her out of the shot. It's so, it's basically, you know, it's, it's Ali Abdelaziz to a T, you know, he, he's um, the UFC's controlled opposition, basically. You know, he's supposed to be there going like, I will get you the best deal out of the UFC and the UFC are just letting him. But yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know how deep to get into that sort of rematch because the first match was just them banging. But if you like fights with people banging, then be excited for this one. Uh, however, you know, I've seen enough rematches of bangers to know that uh, there's also a good chance of both guys going like, I'm going to be well tactical this time. And then it just being a, a humping along the fence extravaganza. But expect Chimiev to be front row for this one because they're going to try and set up him versus the winner, I imagine. Actually, if Colby wins, they probably have to do a, a third with Kamaru, but um, we'll see. Right, what else is on this card? Well, rematch of Rose Namajunas versus Wei Di Zhang. Um, where Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington was like 25 minutes, you got to see these guys testing each other. The original Namajunas versus Zhang was like the best part of a minute. Yeah, one minute 18. 